two. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. All right, we're going. Hey guys, how's it going? Table breakers. Uh, the twenty, no, the thirtieth of December, and uh, we have our four member panel here: Baron G Rock, Kai, and Connell. Um, along with myself, man with a hand. Do we actually have the live counter? I don't see it. Yeah, I yeah, it's up in the corner. It's up in the corner. Oh, it is. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed it. All right, now it's live. All right, exactly. we're at the thirty second post. We're we're, we're live. Yeah. So, last session we were doing this, we were talking about what's a dungeon. Yep. And uh, we kind of had some things pop up, and well, that led into tonight's session. What do you guys want to think? What do you guys want to discuss here? We could continue on dungeons. Oh, and... Shoot. Hmm? What, Gary? Hold on. I think I fucked up. No. There we go. There we go. Now they can hear you. <laughs> oh. oh, that's good. That's oh, good. There we go. I am so sorry. Um, hey, hey Max. How you doing, buddy? Oh, hello. I don't have a problem continue talking about dungeons or... No. I mean, it... We had some unresolved issues last time. Yeah. I mean, I, I I can honestly say I haven't seen all you guys' videos, so I don't know exactly what all you covered. So, A lot of tangents. That's what we usually end up doing. A yeah. lot of tangents. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I'm still on my hold. A dungeon is a carved out structure underneath something that you put prisoners that you okay. have to go save or get something from. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm old school. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh no, no! I'm just gonna hold my tongue down on that one for a bit. <laughs> can we at least can we settle for at least tonight using the term, changing the term just for tonight to to enclosed location where we have adventures? Good. That's I mean that's why some game shops are jokingly called the dungeon. And right. Yeah. It right. It's better to go there sometimes. Yeah, I also don't go in the back because that's just nope. Nope. That's I'm not a dungeon. That's it. never mind. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm. I, I like. Give me a little bit to get worked back up into where I was. I'm, the lack of sleep is catching up. So. <laughs> okay. Stop hanging out at the local dungeon. I, I got nothing. Uh, you're yeah, right. Either. You're right. Ah, uh, no. No, actually, I'm sorry. I don't like. Uh, I need a re. Uh, I, I almost need a re. Uh, a rehash of where we left off. <laughs> uh, talk to you about dungeons. Uh, I, uh, paladins. I remember that much. Man, paladins. See, that's another huge argument I have with the <laughs> too. Because um, I run, like I said, I run five e. You know, and but, you know the other person we had on last week, Max. He's very much does second edition, older editions. I'm like, I know how paladins were in three point five and Pathfinder, and I know what paladins are at five e. And they all have the Paladin title, but not one Paladin is the same to them. Well, the 5e and Pathfinder are basically the same. The 5th edition, you could be a Paladin of Oath of Vengeance, where you took uh, you go out and just smite evil just for the fact that it's evil, evil and you want redemption of some sort. Yeah, this is true. You can do that. Uh -huh. And I still don't have anything wrong with you know, setting a building on fire that have evil witches in it. I don't care what anybody says. They brought their own <laughs> to fire. All right. I just spammed the chat. I, uh, Mr. Max Boyvin wanted me to read something. As a game design concept, a dungeon is a self-contained series of challenges and encounters with a specific goal and clearly defined beginning and end. The actual location doesn't matter. You could be climbing a mage tower, diving down a mine taken by all kinds of nasties, or exploring an ancient city overrun by undeads. In a historical sense, a dungeon is not a dark and damp underground prison. 
The dungeon of a castle, from the French word donjon, was the keep where the Lord would live. There were underground prisons <clears throat> where uh, there were underground prisons where hold on yikes, okay there were underground prisons dark and damp and deep called obelettes but they weren't complex networks of rooms and tunnels, just a small hole in the ground were people kept prisoner in the dungeon? Yes, nobles who were to be sold for ransom were kept in the dungeon according to their station. They would swear on their honor not to escape, and their captor would treat them like guests until the ransom was paid. I even hearted that. I thought that was a good response. All that and all you gave him was a heart? Yeah, that's all you really... That and thumbs up. Mm. So... um. And I'll, I'll just share from last week. Guys, it's going to get a little weird here. Whoa. Is this the Matrix? <laughs> it's better than the Matrix. <laughs> and singing and watching that movie was like being in a dungeon. <gasps> oh. Yeah, that was bad. Okay. Save her sanity. There you go. <laughs> Like legit. Let it, oops. Let me just go to the channel. You don't have to torture them. You have to torment them. That's how they, you know, that's how we feed the inner. Let's go to the channel. You don't. All right. And... All right. This board. And I tend to write. Oh, God, no. My own voice. <laughs> I remember reading it was, a, it was a splat book for a 3.5. God. I can read with what? I Cubans can read with most things. Oh, like, no, and they got down the dragons. The dragons can breed with everything. Like, oh my god! The worst, the worst that I saw was actually in Five E, where somebody showed that a furball get a gnome. At okay, I don't know if that's exactly the comments that we want to pick off from. <laughs> Dude, God, we were everywhere. Oh shit! We went, we yeah, went we so were. shotgun on that, just scattered everywhere. We could talk about the breeding rights of the dragon. Sure, why not? No, God, no, no, <laughs> fuck no. I mean, Happy New Year. <laughs> I have several players who'd be like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh," and I'd be like, "No, no, we've already gone over this. No, 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 no." <laughs> the dragons do not have breeding rights. That's what he's saying, ladies and gentlemen. Dra dragon comes up behind you. You're like, no, 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 no. I do not consent. I do not consent to this. I do not consent to this. I do not consent. That was a, that was a range touch. I didn't consent to. This. God forbid if you run into one of those dragons from was that Rick and Morty? Um, I haven't watched that since like season two. So. Oh, that's disappointing. That's a really good show. <laughs> well, I think it's all right. My friends that like stuff yeah, supernatural. Bruce Bruce didn't have it coming through through correctly. It was coming through his speakers, so it was coming through really garbled. So I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm Ma sorry. Ma Max Ma Max is, is yelling about it. Ah, oh. I was not aware. Oh, only wow. chance I can't follow. Ouch. Ouch! What what do you hear, Garrett? He told me he's gonna go watch the real channel now. How? Ah, I'm sorry, buddy. Wait, we have a real channel? I, I no. have no idea what he's talking about. We're, this is about as piecemeal as it gets. <laughs> we, we are a there? we are a ramshackle operation here, so we we are. I don't even I don't even put my PayPal information in here because I really don't want it to succeed so much. <laughs> oh, I've got all that now. I, I opened up my Patreon this week too, and I've got that all that stuff in my details now. Okay. Um, including so, a link to your channel. Nice. Uh, hey, Miss there, there, there he is. Here now. Yeah, screw Baron. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you're going to get the same content over here as you would over there, but you're going to have a different chat interaction. Um, yeah, so the main thing the actual was, chat is, is over there. <laughs> we, we, were, we were discussing like uh, uh, various things that happen in, in dungeons where the, the nobles get captured and we we tangent on to paladins, and for some odd reason, 
we started to discuss like all the half breed that you can make your player character out of. And for some odd reason, we decided, yep, let's do a part a part two on this. Because c- come on, random thoughts just they work. <laughs> so, well, okay. I mean, I have not ran. Oh, uh, uh, okay. I have ran for the better part of. 12 years now. I know, Bruce, you've probably ran longer. Kai, I'm sure you've ran longer than, you know, I have. And G-Rock, I have no idea. So I'm between the four of us, between the four of us, I'm sure we have a bunch of stories of, no, no, this is how it's supposed to be, or this is how it's supposed to be. And Dragon, please put that person down. No breeding rights for you. Mm-hmm. Remember, do not interfere in the, in the, uh, in the entirety of uh, the and business of dragons. dragons, because you are small and tasty with ketchup. Yep. Yes. And sometimes with ranch. Ooh. That's not ranch. We're in the mid. I we're in the Midwest. Ranch is acquired. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Midwest dragons prefer ranch. <laughs> I'm more of a blue cheese person. Myself. <laughs> I'm weird. Well, you're weird. And now I want ranch. I don't want to ranch on it. I don't know what. I, do. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to discuss the the abomination that I'm eating for dinner tonight. But we had a combination of uh, different mac and cheeses last night for taste test purposes. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Well, they have two stores. Didn't send any this way either. I'm sorry. I'll have to get Asshole. your PO box there, Brant, uh, Garrett. Bastard. I'm still waiting for him to come back in town so he can make me another damn pizza. Because damn, Bruce, that was good. <laughs> I'm not bad. You mean his bread roll? His bread roll with crap on top. Oh yeah, that was amazing. His loaf of bread. Itty bitty. <laughs> that I I refined it a little bit. It's gotten fluffier. <laughs> okay, so now it's two loaves of bread. <laughs> it actually feels lighter. But I'll I'll just I'll end with that. Um, so we have a dungeon. We have a dungeon. We have a dungeon, and it is, is it catered. Un- <laughs> They're talking about notifications in chat. Should we tell them that those things the that that's that's kind of like what what is something that you purchase as a side item but you never receive it? Because that's what notifications remind me of. Marriage. Wait, no, sorry. Sex with marriage, yes. <laughs> wait, wait. What, what are we talking about? Notifications? People in um, not Facebook doesn't actually you know, send out any. So, mm. well, I was uh, a reminder earlier today that you know uh, this was going to happen tonight. Like I was set a reminder that uh, miss things tomorrow. That was the only reminders I got. Hmm. So, a, a dungeon we. Are we going to say that we only classify dungeons as underground testing no. areas? Okay. No. Is that no. Just like the idea of you say it's a dungeon and really it's just a flow chart that you designed. The it terrain is-, is window dressing with rules attached to it sometimes, and there's challenges that you must overcome. Pretty much, because I mean, because. Like if you get yourself trapped in the idea that it has to be one thing, you you're just stuck in that one mentality. So it was like you, you got to at least broaden your options so that way you're a bit more creative as a storyteller. So uh, sorry, as a GM. And as a guy that likes, I like hex crawls a lot, a lot of hex crawls. We could we could do hex crawls the rest of my days, and I'd be happy. I wouldn't ask for a different type of game. You're, you're talking like Kingmaker ish yeah. crawls? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kingmaker yeah. or Forbidden Lands or something. Where you're making a world, I, where you're traveling it, seeing it, and making the whole world. Why not? You know, I I, I laugh when people say, no, no, we'll come back for this. Or no, we'll we ain't never. That. And they never do. No, the. A huge pile of gold we can't get to right now, but we'll be back. No, we won't. We'll forget no. about it. Careful. You might have one player who is writing down everything, and he is. 
And when the party goes, we're broke. And he goes, oh, actually, no, I have a list here in my, bu- in my book and I'm going to, and suddenly the, the money, the party goes from being broke to way more money than they ever had. Cause they went back and got all their shit back. But you have that one player who's actually putting effort in. That one player. Yup. And, and everyone forgets about it except for that one player who has a notebook that's like way bigger than everybody else's and it's full. And you're like, what's written in there? Everything. And you're happy for that one player. <laughs> Actually, here recently, well, not recently, but the last several months, I'm rerunning Rise of the Rune Lord uh, Pathfinder. And in the earlier, one of the earlier encounters, you, um, if you fight the you fight the goblins and you find out that there's this great big giant uh, crown, it's like meant for a giant, but the thing is huge, right? And every time I ran it beforehand, everybody's like, we'll have to come back for it, we have to come back for it. And the pace of the story goes, you never go back. The party I'm running right now on my Monday games, they're like, nope, nope, we're going to stay put until we figure out how to get it out. I'm like, wow, okay. Do we have to worry about goblins? No, because we killed each and every last one of them, including the babies. Like, oh, okay. And well, Max, and Max, yes. As a former Eve Online player, I am a master at flowcharts and spreadsheets. Well, and yes, papers and charts. paychecks. It's like if you're going to run an, I, I run something that's very large with lots of moving parts. You need to have all of it written down. You need to be able to follow, be able to read and follow a chart. It's not hard as a GM, and it's, it's even easier as a player. But then again, I like paperwork. I like a lot of paperwork. I want documentation in like triplicate sometimes. That would be nice. Blaine, do you ever use a Hero Lab or any of the online or digital character tracking materials or no? I keep wanting to, but I'm too much of a traditional um, everything's written on paper person. So <laughs> I have a feeling this was a slide. I do. I use Hero Lab. I I, I use Hero Lab. I I uh I have a bad case of hey there goes a scroll go by. Did I remember to write down the right number in the right place? So it keeps my character and me honest. It's like no, I think I have like thirty, not thirty. Let's say I I think I have ten skill uh, ranks and you know perception. No, no, I'm sorry, I only have eight. I do. Uh... I take online notes with my word, uh, my Apache word processor, but I I don't use the computer aside from that. Uh, Oh, excuse me. I use uh, World Anvil because that's a really good program. And if anybody here wants to use a a digital online world building thing that will give you lots of integration, I finally found something better than Realmworks, and that would be uh, World Anvil. I think I, World Anvil is better. I see. I see adverts for that, but I guess this could be a hard transition from paper. I, I paper everywhere, and binders full of material, and a backpack that's just game notes to going pure digital. And like character sheets and NPCs, yes, digital, but Everything else is all paper, so. Yeah, and I agree with, I agree. If I'm actually sitting at a table with people, I, I prefer the old way, but any more, half the people I enjoy gaming with live in different states I do. Hell, Bruce, we live down in Texas. I got a group down in Tennessee that I enjoy immensely. I have a uh, couple uh, couple guys I hang out with in Germany that play. and it Just use what I have, use the tools that I have. And if Hero Lab makes my life easier and no one's going to complain about it, so be it. It's not like it lets me cheat on anything. That's true, but like I said, it's just... The momentum of bureaucracy just prevents the upgrading. That's all. Hello, but, and, junior, Geeks and Joy. And Good. since I mostly play with people who are also... <laughs> I, lovers of, I lovers of arcane bureaucracy... Eh, we all are horrifying at this, so I, I don't have that in me. I mean, I, I take notes when I'm in like Bruce's campaign. 
I have a notebook that, you know, outside of it says Bruce's campaign, don't lose schmuck, um, that I take notes for. But gaming, when I'm DMing, I have like three notebooks. Okay, this is what they're fighting. This is what they're getting, and this is what I'm doing to them. Yeah. So. No. Now, in getting in in preparation for moving, I had to literally pack up all the old campaign binders that are all sitting currently in a box. So, Dwayne, what type of headset is that? I just now noticed that. I, I know you've been wearing a headset for probably ten weeks. Let me check. Okay. Uh, um, the Afterglow AG9. Okay, I'll have to look that up on the web. It was a pretty good gift. I very much liked it because somebody wanted me to actually speak online, so they bought me headsets. Nice. Yeah. LDG of Geeks and Joy says, hello, Bruce. Awesome One says, happy new year, y'all. Thank you, gentlemen. Legion of Myth says, without the title stating schmuck, he'd probably lose it. It's an important part of that title. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Max. <laughs> you know, oh. know him well enough to fire back yet, but um, hey, Bruce, I want Bruce. Give me a minute; I'll be right back. Okay, Garrett. I, you remember before the stream, I, I had to have my own disposed time too. So, thank you. No, I've got uh, a major echo going on, and I can't track it down. Is probably me. That's just how it works. Schmuck is a very important part of the title. Like, uh, I imagine with Max it would be Earth Down. Don, 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 Don. Say it, Don. say it right. <laughs> Actually, no. Last week it was Earth <laughs> Dong because of the why well, I thought that's why I thought they said it, Earth Dong. I'm like, no, wait, no. what are you guys playing? <laughs> I'll play with their plane. <laughs> it's like I don't know. Earth Dong. That's great. No. Drink, <laughs> drink. No, he's not here. I'll wait. Earth dog. <laughs> uh, he's he's here. Whenever he's here, if you if you mention Earth dog, you have to have a drink. Ah, uh, I just start I just start packing a drink. That's all. It's all right. So, where are you moving to, if I may ask, outside of that place? Um, near Bradley. Oh God! So you're actually in Peoria. Yeah. Holy. I'm I'm in the heights right now. I'm just moving towards I am moving down to, towards Bradley. That's all. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know. I, I I figured I don't know why I figured. But this is the internet and everybody can be from everywhere. I'm from nowhere important. That's all that matters. I live in Pekin. Talk about nowhere that matters. That's a dungeon. No. Illinois is a dungeon. No matter what you do, you can't get out. It's Ravenloft. Actually, I I can say that it's possible to get out of Illinois. <laughs> Give it time, Bruce. No, I'm pretty certain <laughs> I'm not going back. We all say that. And then you wake up one day, and then there's the face of Pritzker going, you're back. Pay your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> you see a very fat man get attacked by a slightly smaller man. <laughs> What's the, <laughs> was it the mascot of Bradley? I can't think of what it is. Hey, at least we don't have Madigan anymore, so that's okay. You you know the bad thing about Illinois, and we're going to go to Illinois politics for just a few seconds. But uh, when when they shuffled off Blagojevic on his perp walk, he was not the only ex Illinois governor in in prison system at the time. He, there was three others. We had four <laughs> total imprisoned governors at once. Give it. I think that's just a requirement plan for being the governor of Illinois. He goes straight to prison afterwards. That's three hots in a cot, you know. Hey, that was my retirement plan before I had a kid. Hey, you know what? You're not paying taxes in jail. <laughs> that is that is a, a pretty good point. <laughs> not quite, quite worthy of my, yeah, like, let me do this before I'm 50. No. No, I'm good. Uh <laughs> What you do is you do something dumb enough to keep, uh, put you in the good prison, not the bad prison. Well, that means you have to go federal, not state. Yeah, and I'm not, uh, you know, with this being, <laughs> I'm not giving anybody any ideas with the ideas I've had. So, you know, the idea is to go to the good prison. 
Earth we dawn, <laughs> where quiet time with dwarves has a whole different meaning. <laughs> They're going to bang the anvil a little bit. Hello, Sherry. Sherry with the pie behind her name. Hello, Sherry. She says, hello, Bruce Lombardo, Dix Division. Thank you. We have we have some people that regularly rotate through. Thank you guys for showing up and enjoying our stream. Uh, just four gentlemen that like talking about the gaming. And uh, tonight's topic being that what is a dungeon? That, that, that's not a topic that we're going to hold to ourselves and force ourselves to talk about that and only that. But Oh, no, because t tangents run everything. So Yeah, t tangents, tangents kind of rule the world. I don't, I don't know how they managed to do the news without breaking into like, oh, there's this one story I have. They have producers and they're paid better than us. That's how that, it works. That and shot callers. I, I, think I do really believe that's callers. a huge chunk of it. I don't want to come on here with a shot callers. No. That would be bad. Um, they sell remote controlled ones. You can you can you can no. run, run over Bluetooth and or the internet. No, I think the best thing we could do is turn this into some like for the holidays or whatever. Turn every time uh, to a drink game. Every time we go off topic. <laughs> no, I got work in the morning. Um, <laughs> drunk. <laughs> I'm calling in then. <laughs> I ain't got to work tomorrow, so I don't care. I'm trying to debate if I want to call in tomorrow. That's all it comes down to. And yeah. shock, shocky monkey sounds dies. You know, whenever I saw Sherry's pie symbol behind her name, I got the warrant song in my head. You know, I was trying to let that go, Bruce. I was really trying to let that go. God, do you remember the mu music video to that song? Yeah, I do. Yes. <laughs> you guys don't remember this probably because I didn't tell you or you weren't there when I said it but my father was a mayor of our small town my high school years oh god so, so uh, I, I was kind of under the microscope more than usual because I couldn't misbehave as hard as my friends were and my friends were excellent at that uh, one of them was a guy by the name of Chad Gray and he later in life moved up to Peoria with his aunt because his grandmother wasn't really helping him too much. I mean, she had ideas and he didn't want to follow them. And so he went up to Peoria and he joined up with a group of people. They were musicians and they made a band called Mudvayne. I went to high school. I went to school with that guy. So I know Mudvayne. Not my yeah. type of music, but I know I know they're from this area. Yep. They got famous up in Peoria and uh He's actually from my hometown. That and the guitarist from Jars of Clay. But we were under the microscope. For being a 300-person town, there's a lot of gossip there. Man. You know, for mm, Peoria or the, the uh, Peoria over its existence has produced some really interesting things. Bands, whiskey, moonshine from time to time. Now it's math, but you know, it's produced some very interesting things. <laughs> well, we, we put all those people in Pekin. <laughs> Oops, sorry, bud. Explosions <laughs> happen. You know, the good thing is, I haven't heard of an exploding microwave in Pekin in a long time. No, no. Um, there was a fire sometime last week, but it was electrical, uh, not meth. Ah, uh, disappointment. I know. I lost 20 bucks. Mm. Oh, so anyway, we were back on dungeons. Yes. And, and while we're on the topic of dungeons, I want to ask, Kai. Yes. When you run a dungeon, when you mm. run a game. Yes. Do you map out your dungeon or do you just have a flow chart of the things that will happen? Depends, honestly, on what I kind of am, am trying to shoot for. If it's meant to be more like a an Ocean's Eleven slash or where timing is important, maps I, maps are very much going to be drawn, written out, people I, people put in right in the right rooms, encounters are all planned. If they're if it's if it's meant to be more, they're just trying to have a general adventure, the flow, ch I, the flow chart will be much more likely to, to be pulled out because if it's not time critical 
flowchart, time critical map. Hmm. Because I, when you have like I've been in groups where they literally have catered the dungeon, and at that point, it's like, okay, um, this is getting kind of silly. They don't really need to know every last five foot square in the entire place because obviously they're not paying attention to it enough. And I wasn't running those. I was in the party with those people. And the GM's not giving a crud, so that kind of tells me where that if effort put in is what effort gets, I mean, what effort you get out of it. So I guess that's really what it comes down to. Is like I would like to say I'm would like to map out everything, but then sometimes when the entire dungeon might be you enter into a onto an onto a swamp filled island. There's not very many paths through it. Do you really want to map out where every tree is on the entire island as you're trying to hunt down, I uh, hunt down something and go find a, a lost hidden uh, hidden bunker? No, you really don't need to worry about that. So, what if it's a tree that you're trying to hunt down? Then yes, you need a map of every tree. Ooh, yeah. If I'm so crazy to <laughs> if I am so crazy to go hunt down a mangrove treant in a mangrove forest on a mangrove island, dear God, what am I, I what have I done to myself and why am I running that? But if that's the plan, sure. But I had no. to have made the conscious choice to do that. No plans, only agendas. Plans fail. You're right. <laughs> I, I, I have yet I have yet to see somebody make a plan in games I've been in, games I've D, uh, DM'd, where like this is a plan. We're sticking to the plan. No. Five seconds into the plan, it goes to shit. Well, yeah. Plans only last until the first uh contact with the enemy anyway. Yeah. Man mangroves, are they a swamp bound item? Yeah, they're they're kind of a marsh, a marsh tree that had like with a really, really wide, horrifying root system. Really hard to get around in. They're fun, but really hard to get around in. I've gone to Florida a few times, and I've actually seen a mango, a mango. What you guys are describing, it's kind of floating out in the middle of the ocean because somebody was trying to dig around it or do something. And next thing you know, uh, you know like a great big small island. Where Gilgan, the captain, and all the other people are on saying we're screwed. Just floating oh, out wait. in the ocean. Wait, wait. wait. The, the hat here. Let me get a little, a little closer there. That is a nice That is a very nice hat. Ooh, nice hat. I, you, I, I can thank my wife for that. Let's see. If, there we go. Get my, and then my, my <laughs> Mangroves them these swamps. Look, the island I was trying to talk about it was in a murky estuary at the end of a major river. I, I, like, a, So, yeah, it wasn't really a true island. It's just that you're in a tributary of a massive delta. So, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not mapping the entire mount. I am map. I, I, this, this right here, this quote, I'm a mangrove treant in a mangrove world. That For some odd reason, I'm thinking there should be like Grace Kelly dancing – with with there there should be some sort of like dance number going on with that. Maybe and the, mangrove, that. Uh, and the mangrove tree is Fred Astaire. No, no, it's a Jim Buffett. It's a it's a Jim Buffett video. Jimmy Buffett video. He's trying to eat a hamburger. Oh, Jimmy Buffett, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy he didn't go vegan. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, cheeseburgers and pears would suck it with veggie. Yeah. So. Why would Grace Kelly dance to a Barbie girl spoof? You know, I'm okay with it. I didn't say it was high art, Shadzar. I just said it was, It was. I, for some odd reason, I could see Grace Kelly and maybe an animated Jerry dancing along. <laughs> Um, oh, a, material oh, world. Oh, a baby group. Baby Grace group. And baby group. Yep. Totes see it. Totes can see it. Okay. 
So whenever we have, like, say, a situation where if flames running, you probably you're you're going along your flow chart. You've got your ideas for how you want the party to proceed, but you're not really forcing them along any particular path in the dungeon. You want them to feel like you are. Because honestly, it's all big. It's all a big illusion. I mean, it really is. Because it's like a, I, mean, I know once combat comes out, yeah, maps are coming out, going to draw out the general area. Because honestly, for to, to most people, I don't know. I, I I don't I don't run off of a digital tabletop where I can just throw a digital map down. It has all these really cool pictures. I have a vinyl map and a and a wet erase marker and so for most people a a 20 by 40 square room i is a room it's just going to be a mark of green of green or black ink on a map and i draw a circle saying tree trunk acid pit spike trap this is a storefront i i can run a wild west like you erase redraw it now you're having a wild west shootout on it so as far as most of them concerned your descriptions mean more than knowing where every little rock is unless you got a player who goes no no i need to know where every little rock is and at that point you God start damn it what <laughs> no <laughs> but that's what i would reply wait i need to know where every little rock is god really god damn you but you know there's some players who you know <laughs> well my character's all about telekinesis so i pick up rocks and throw them at people so i need to know where all the rocks are and here's me <sighs> okay all right but is there is there to quote another person some of us know is the rules allowing for you to pick up that uh rock is it the right percentile die size i mean if it is is a d4 is it two d6s I mean, do, do, should I throw odds or evens on what side of the rocket hits you? <laughs> you know what? Sure. Yeah, let's go with this number. Let's start. Let's start to... I won't give Kai a heart attack. Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. Because I've had these people. And the answer that – and that laughter of, oh, sure, sure. Okay, let's just – let us let me waste everybody else's time for the next half hour describing you every rock. And then you can make your ro I make your rock throwing uh, spell skill. Yay! I feel special. Yeah, yeah you do feel special. And the special, last question is, that, and somebody else at the tables, does that person have the right feet for throwing that rock? Oh my God! Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> I, obviously, you do because you found it out of book. I don't care. And uh, on on page, Wait. I don't know. You looked at the Hold wiki. On. So Hold on. Let me tear my sleeve off. Look, I've got a sling. <laughs> Yeah. And then when I go, where the hell did you find that? And then they go, well, I found it on the wiki. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. And this is the best part is that when you have somebody else who's like, uh, who like, we're used to having our, ch our sources challenged and being able to source and then defend our, I, I defend our choices and then be able to go, uh, no, you can't just look at the wiki and go find an answer. You need to go actually go look at the book. Well, I don't have the book. That's not our pro. That's not our problem. That's yours. If you're going like, but 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 the program says I can have it. I know, I know Path, but I know Path Builder or whatever computer program you have tells you everything you need to know. But do the homework, know where it came from, so that way when we challenge you, and they're like, well, can we do that to you? And I'm like, yes, because if you say I'm I'm pulling bullshit out of my ass, I guarantee you. I I have my sources already written down. Why? Because I'm used to dealing with rules lawyers who are like, no, you can't do that. No, wrong. Actually, it's an advanced player's handbook. It, 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 it's an advanced combat and tactics. Blah 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 blah. Pull out the right book and then open the page and go. This is the rule. And then have everyone go. Oh, you actually read the rules. I'm like, yeah, I can actually read the rules. This, this is why some a lot people, of people stay I away can, from Pathfinder. You had this same thing was happening in D and D third. What system do you uh, prefer to run? Which was that? What system do you prefer to run? West End Game Star Wars D six. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> the most basic and easy to run system I've ever touched. Traveler. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Star Wars D six. I think is, is far is superior. the best. Is the best game. I. I it, it's fun, but. Because D&D &D is, I'm sorry, 
adventure I mean, underground locations and giant lizards that breathe fire is a, I mean, is a wonderful game system and is omnipresent you are it's an omnipresent system you deal with it I, I, I personally, I, I very few <laughs> times. You love the game master. Yes. I, there is very few times I found myself sitting at the table where it does not have at least one person there that has a law degree in all things Pathfinder. You know, that was one thing I noticed up in, in uh, Peoria. I had a lot of professionals at our tables. Our, we our did. Tables, our tables were so fucking stocked with master's degrees and people that had hundreds of thousands of college debt or they were an 05 or an 04 and they were just accustomed to the rules i said so that was just something that you dealt with all the time yeah and i think that scars that scars the hell out of me is on on, on why i ran the, i run the way i do because i'm used to dealing with people who uh, like so you have a master's degree in how many in how many things Oh shit! Okay, um, you actually do have a higher okay, or and so like when you start dealing with those kind of people, it it affects how you think and how you run, and it makes it hard to go back down to when I go play with some with other people, and it's just like, God, you guys are so refreshing because you're so simple, and it's nice because I don't, I, I don't have to understand nuclear fucking engineering to be able to explain how a dungeon works. Oh, no, no, no. Worse was the, the, and as a layman, as a tradesman who's a very apt at describing how things work at a middle school level to people, it pains me to play D&D or any system with any moving parts with a failed engineer. And you know the corporation that we blame for that starts with a C ends with an R. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. That 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 company right there ruined more gaming tables around Peoria Heights, Peoria, Washington than anywhere else that I know of because they would force these kids into an ideolo ideological state to where they could not accept things that weren't permissible by their physics teachings. And yet, whenever you ran a game, you had to abide by all the laws of logic. You could never say it's magic. You you had to explain it. Chapter and well, verse. You had to break out blueprints. You had to show them protractors. And you had to get out your Lambda, Lambda, Lambda credentials in order to be able pretty to do that. The pretty other much. Thing, the other thing with that also, that also split up a lot of tables because... They either A, lost the job, uh, B, they got transferred to a different place. Yeah. You know, there, 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 there was other components in there, too. You know, I will say that, it, it, you know, my, my jobs in Illinois were not as steady as what I have down here. And I've, I've worked in the oil field in Texas, which that is a very touchy subject because it, it, it one day your barrel price is at, 50 or $60, $60 is great because that's where the banks in Dallas and Fort Worth and Houston will open up their, their coffers to mom and pop shops that have a written plan for how to make this money back that they're going to get on the loan. But then a month or two goes by and somebody in the Middle East gets butthurt or a, a prince in Saudi Arabia suddenly has a fatwa against them and the barrel just drops to $19 a piece and so you're out of a job. That nothing you can do to stop it. You're you're done. Human resources loves you. Apply with us whenever the barrel goes back up again. And I don't have to yep. worry about that now because I'm a tradesy. But um, you you, it felt like in Illinois it was a lot more difficult to keep a job. Yeah. One Here's one comment like from one comment from my chat is so many of my notes, and this comes from my wife. So many of the notes on. Uh, character sheet tend to be page numbers or book references. Yeah. So that's going back to what, what we were talking about. Of, you know, back it up. Where did you get this from? Where did this come from? But also, you know, it's also for you to look up going, okay, you know, I, I usually do that with spells. So it's like, okay, what page is that spell on? Just so I can make sure that 
Because when it comes back around to me, I'm ready to rock and roll. I, right. See, I don't. I prefer my players to have the books that they're playing now, especially in Pathfinder. If you're playing a character that is based of core and ultimate magic, then I at least want you to have those two books or what variation. Will you, ex- will you accept PDFs? Because most of us have, di- have gone digital just for sheer affordability and transportation uh, rights. Cause I don't want to fork it anymore to be able to move my gaming books. Yeah, no. Oh, you, mean I, like, you mean like I used to come into the game room with yeah, your with your bag full, full, yeah, yeah, full of yeah. book full. Yeah, I don't know I, about you guys, but I'm not getting any damn younger. Carrying around a you know a small ton of books is not helping my back any. But, yeah, uh, speak for I, yourself. I'm getting younger every day. I don't want to pull. I don't want to pull my A-frame backpack out and go. This is where all my game game books are in, and like, and have to like heft that fucker and carry it in. No, no, I, I'm fine with PDFs. The other okay. thing is, I'm fine with Hero Labs. Hero Labs doesn't pull it from random uh, websites. You have to buy said books. You have to buy the PDF. That's my one problem. That's my because, wizard. Because the thing is, is that the. The in Hero Labs, yes, you have to buy the books, but there's also third party books in there that they can get. Then you just don't allow those. Okay. See, my one well, problem I have with that's the thing is if they already have it on there, you're not going to be able to say yes or no because then you're going to well, be like, oh, now then they have to go back, spend another 20 minutes pulling all that crap off. That's why you have everybody. Sorry for uh, talking over you, Kai, but that's why you have anybody that does this. Say, hey, let me see your character up front. Then when we level, hey, you're using Hero Labs. These are the books that are approved. Let me know. Let me see your character once you level so there is no shenanigans. You have to, some some players, you kind of have to keep a thumb on them. You do. But I think my one problem I have with Hero Labs is the idea of I've already bought the book. I've already paid between 20 to... $40 Forty dollars, bo- twenty yeah. to fifty book I, dollars for a book, and then to go pay some dick smoking company who's making me a computer aid money so I can buy a module to go plug into their program so I can <laughs> use the book I already own. And at that point, I'm just like, eat a dick, eat a bag of dicks, eat a whole cinema truck of dicks. You ain't getting money out of me. And everyone goes, but Hero Lab is such a good program. I know it's a good program, but I don't want to buy, rebuy, and then rebuy again because God help you if you're using D&D Fit Edition's Dungeons and Dragons Beyond program. Fuck that thing. You know, the trick oh. is with the Beyond system is find have a buddy who already has all the damn books and have him – DM the game so you're using all his books and have somebody else run the game. There's a well, way, there's always a way around. Uh, no, the thing no, no, is hold on, hold on. I don't want to spend fucking money. I don't want to give Watsy money three or four times for the same shit I already oh, own. Yeah, no, I, I, I get you. I, I really do. Well, and the other thing is, is you have to realize is that with that D&D Next or whatever the hell it is, the online thing, yeah. is that when you have those, they automatically update anytime they errata anything or they change things like you know the the phylactery is no longer a phylactery or whatever the hell it's else. a gun ball woke, woke bullshit that they decide they want to roll out with oh everybody is is, is we're not going to do alignments because blah yeah oh, i know oh, oh wait 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 are we diverting onto the the restreams that have happened this year <laughs> for Dungeons and Dragons. Are, are we are we diverting? Oh, oh, we're not diverting. We're following the flow of fucking bullshit. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're following the flow of shit, and we just hit the bottom. Oh my god! Is a is a and I, and I will stand by that. And and yeah. everyone who wants to sit back and and pray to the the altar of the Almighty Gygax. Play the games that Gygax actually produced. Oh, no. I'm telling you that Condor is part of JSG. When when Condor, <laughs> when, when JSG takes his shirt off, Condor sticks his head out of his belly and starts talking 
and JSG puts his arms down. He loses consciousness. I'm telling you. Well, here's, here's, here's my thing, is that I have seen more and more of the of – the, I, I almost want to go with a Stargate reference, the priors of Gygax. Ooh, ooh, are we going Ori now? Oh, we're going full Ori with that. Oh God, yes, no. The, prior, the priors of Gygax coming out, telling us what we're doing wrong when they haven't even played a module, played a system that actually Gygax touched. You know, there were that, more people. There were a lot more people my, than just those two people. <laughs> I understand, but that's the one that they set up there. You know, on their pedestal and everything. I know. Else. And, you know, truthfully, if you want to back that, that right you know, you want to you want to be be a prior for the 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 uh, for the Almighty Gygax, I completely understand. But if you're I, going to do that, you should play only things that he actually touched and, and, wrote and that would them. include castles and crusades, right? That would. <laughs> 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 Open your mind, Quaid. <laughs> Open your mind. At least you're, you're quoting the good version of that movie. <laughs> yes. There, there's only one movie for Total Recall, and that was in eighty in eighty nine. That was it. Get down. Get to the chopper. Oh. I didn't say that in that one. Never mind. No, I, I'm Je uh, Jessica. Whatever her name is, is better looking than Brooke uh, Stone. Uh, no, oh, hold on here. There's like a generation between those two. We cannot we cannot judge them accurately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think you can. I I I I like blondes better, but Jessica Beale just has that rump. I'm going to be a total pig when I say that. That's the only reason why I like Jessica Biel. She has the perfect bum. I thought it was the girl from Terminator 3. Nope, Jessica Biel came out later, and holy shit. Terminator. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Okay, we, we, we've totally derailed now. The, we, we, good, we've good. We, we, we've turned, we've turned uh, certain people into priors. Of the Ori in the name of Gygax and yeah. Hey, look, we're Max, we are use that. we are dodging the we are dodging the bullet that we. That we <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. So yeah, when when it comes, I'm going to kind of go back on track now. Okay. Uh, the you know when I'm putting together like a dungeon, typically I will put it. I, I don't map it out at all. It all comes from blah, 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 whatever I think. Okay, this sound this sounds like this could be interesting, and I'll draw it out as they're going along. I don't even it, I don't even have an endpoint for it. So it could be like two rooms. It could be thirty rooms by the time we get done with it. It just depends on how I'm feeling. You know, I'll do. I'll when I, I when I uh, is she eighteen yet? Jesus Christ. Yeah, she's 18. She's over the age of 18 by at least a decade by now. Um, when drawing out maps, especially for dungeons, I will... There, I find myself drawing out malls half the time, you know, Northwoods Mall, or the high school I went to for a dungeon. That's just how my brain works. Um, no, those are for zombie attacks. <laughs> they they were valid. They're all they're hallways with rooms off to the side that no one wants to be at. If you can find a map to say to, to St. Francis, it's a wonderful dungeon. Well, it depends on which part the old part or the new part. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> especially if you can get down into the into the uh, into the old tunnels underneath of it that. Don't even have modern lights, and they're just kind of like light bulbs wall, hanging wall, from wires. Wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where <laughs> yeah, the you know underneath where the bars, most of the bars were where they had the tunnel down to the riverfront. Yup. How these? Uh, uh, if if I am like, like I said last week, if I'm doing like a, a maze or a labyrinth, 
I'll use those titles from Wrath of uh, Charlon or whatever. I'll just let the players place them in tiles. And if it goes left, right, or center, that's the direction they go. Pre-made, you know, it's a map that works itself. Or, or have them roll a D4 and then they pick up a random tile. At that point, you're just kind of – you're not really the dungeon master. You're just the ref at that point. So No, because you're actually they're, – they're putting it together. So it's as if they have no idea how it's going to be. Fair enough. So you're – and you know that – because you've looked at the tiles that are out there, and you know that X, Y, and Z tiles are going to have their encounters on it. You're right. Uh, yeah, it's like it's like every what was it? I had a chart for this one, and this is one of the few, not one of the few, but I was prepared for it. No, no, I don't need to talk to anybody. I, I'm good. Um, where four tiles in, they're going to run into then a roll dice and look on the page. All right, it was a fifteen. They are fighting skeletons. Roll, you know, a d six. They are fighting five skeletons, then so forth and so on until, you know, I think they got far, far enough into the labyrinth where you see the one, uh, the bottom one that says home. Mike, that's from when, you know, either the beginning or the end. And when I do that, it's basically not to uh, so much to drive the story, but just for them to go through the resources and realize that sometimes they need to run. Sometimes they just have to push, or other times they just have to push through. There is no players, rest. Players never run. <laughs> They're dumb. They do not realize death is coming. They don't run. There is a mine. Was it? There's a beholder. There's a vampire beholder down there. You can't put one of those against us. Oh yes, yes I, I can. can. Here, let me take this squirrel and let me throw every template on it, and then you're fighting it. <laughs> <laughs> and whales, the they've been having that squirrel. Here's a magical door. You have three doors, you can, but if you can only open up one, where did the other two go? I don't know. You That's just not... have to open the door that leads to the, uh, uh, what's that creature that everybody bitches about and I've never seen in any campaign? Trash. You die. Yeah, Trass. Yeah. No. Oh. No, no. See, see, I totally threw off because I had such a good bluff check in one game. I rolled it and made it, and I go, "Oh yeah," you know, because I was playing kind of this from the from the mountain type. And oh yeah, yeah. Everything was fine until about two years ago. Pack of terras come through. It was not good. It was not good. And then DM, oh, roll, roll for that. And I did. And she goes, "Well, she she believes you, but she's still skeptical." And I'm like, oh, no, 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 package rask. Yeah. There can only ever be one. And I, that, that's the thing. I want a package rask because that would be amazing. Just to throw out there. I think it would be fun because I'm that asshole. Like I said, I mean, I get the stats where I'm, I'm, I have tempted by the one of the figs for ever a guy who does 3D printing is going to print on a terrace. I'm like, yeah, oh, okay. Just to have it, I guess. Yeah. And take out the shelf and go, this could eat you one day. And then you put it back on the shelf because every player knows you're not actually going to throw a, a, a CR kill us all monster at us. Thank you. <laughs> well, no, because all campaigns have to stop at what, 15th level now? Oh. You can't run the path that can you can't run a cane past fifteen level because there is nothing in the book that can kill us once we're at fifteenth level, Mike. Really? Okay. <laughs> ding ding. You know, I never played with, with Mythic. I looked at it. Ugh. I I I know. Here's the groaners from the Pathfinder crowd. Uh, I played in a friend's campaign for that mythic campaign where you fight demons. And I think I played like righteous. three, yeah, I played like three issues. And it was uh, pretty horrible. And I, I bought Legendary Games, three book volume set where they fixed mythic, according to them. And I have never opened those books. Well, <laughs> ever. 
The problem with, you know, the entire time I was in that campaign, uh, Wrath of the Righteous, we need to find ways to help our city. We need to find ways to bring money into our city. I'm like, hey, let's open up a whorehouse. No, no, we can't do that. I'm like, why, why not? Campaign. <laughs> Was it no. Texas? Hey, Whorehouse has paid for a lot of different things back in the good old days. Very much so. Now, no. I, I, I will say that if you're running a game and your characters want to go up to 20th or over 20th level, I think there's a few books out there. One of them is Chronicle of Legends. And I'm talking about Pathfinder, not 5e. I don't talk about 5e. I, I don't play that game. I play Pathfinder in 3.5, 3.0. I, I like 3.x. But Pathfinder has a really good mentality behind their system. And the last book they put out for it was they talk about 20th level characters that were in one class. And at every class, 20th level, that book details a capstone. Do you gentlemen know what I'm talking about? I know what capstones are, but yeah. Well, no, I mean, I remember Epic out three point five, but no, not for Pathfinder. <laughs> Darth Thick says, "I killed a twentieth level character. It's not that hard." And Shadzar's like, "It's pretty easy. It just takes a paper shredder." <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't tell you how often that since I require paper that players go, "I lost my character." Like, start rebuilding. I don't know. What, I don't know what's on that character sheet anymore. Well, that's yeah, my that's the one thing. Not my problem. <laughs> I I don't have the excuse. I'm sorry, I lost my character. Don't you have Hero Labs? Yeah. Hold on, give me a second to pull it up. I don't want to play it anymore. Well, you know. Man, it's convenient. You lost your character sheet. I'm so sorry. Start re-rolling. <laughs> I lost my tablet. Wait, what? Yeah. Grab your grab these three d six. And write down the following ability score. <laughs> no, if I wanted to kill a party, I would not use a trash. I would actually use this big bitch. Just because it's an ancient red dragon. And why not? Poof, there goes Toaster. Darth Thief yeah. loves the, the Shadzar idea of the paper shredder. Optimus says, you're going to fight 56 fully grown ancient dragons. The side dish of one and third beholder lich. Now are you? And then the only thing better than plot armor is a plot bullet. Yes. <sighs> I kind of like that idea. I'm not going to lie. Okay. So. Okay. I've got a question for you guys. All How right. long should a campaign run? To the natural end of it? To you get tired of it? Or do you cap out at a certain level? Because paperwork. Well, it, it depends. Are you going to just put it on hiatus and come back? Or are you just going to completely stop? If I'm going to run a high from uh, 1 to, let's say, 20, it's going to be a, a straight go, 1 through 20. There's no going to be a no hiatus. It's just going to run until it's done. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you that is up to the DM. The thing is, is the DM has to keep the, the players invested right that's the biggest thing if the players aren't invested they're going to start you know playing on their tablets they're going to start doing other crap and then <laughs> that's when good. that's when you and then that's when you need to reevaluate going okay what am i not doing right here or that's when you just say screw it here's a dragon they have choices they can either run or fight and die man yeah. dragons are just like the the end all be all of, you know what? Fuck you. Here's a dragon, and all the Terrask is is a big is it, it, Bowser. <laughs> Go. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that what a lot of DMs don't realize, even with with a dungeon, is that if the players go into it, they always have the players don't even realize this because I don't think it's been you know really it's not talked about. Is that the players have the option to run. The players have an option to leave and not even mess with it. Right. 
Well, the, I think that would be considered the na a natural end. If the party as a whole says, this is something we're just not getting paid enough or whatever to do, that is just a natural end to that story. Oh, it, well, here's the thing. You could also do it, okay, if we're not going to be doing that anymore, then, hey, well, you got to go back and tell the guy, hey, we, 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 we ain't doing the job. Sorry, you got to find somebody else. Here's yeah. your money. Well, no, not even that. Then, then you can, then you have all kinds of things. So let's say it's a, it's a Lord or, or something like that. Oh, well you, uh, you besmirched me and, and did not uh, complete the task that you said you would. They throw them in jail or they behead them all or whatever. Yeah. So you can, there's several ways that you can, you can deal with that To You don't necessarily have to kill them to end the campaign. If they're, if they're locked in jail forever. Until they rot, then yeah. They were you back know, in the dungeon and they have to do a jail a jail escape. The thing here is, is well, I'll, I'll let's jump in on this one. Is like, for your question of campaigns when they end, it can literally just be simply the party. Because unless you like, because it, it, I'm gonna go back to my idea that it is give and take where the players are. They can choose to decide to go, you know what? I think I'm content now. And suddenly when you have only one person who's like, I my, my character still has, still has goals, and that's the party goes, yeah, but we won't support those goals. At that point, it's like, all right. So does anyone want to make – I mean, if you've been playing a good enough campaign where they have like, well, I have money, I have followers, I have a significant other, I have land and holdings – you know what? I don't feel like going off into the kingdom of 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 dark and evil stan over there and mucking about because well the the dark lord will be the, will still be there in 20 years and he's not going to invade so fuck it. I ain't going. And suddenly your your game goes from being so I don't go out with it with a campaign going. This game's going to run from first level to twentieth. I'm really, like, it's going to run till first level till when the story says everyone goes. You know, I'm I'm okay establishing the kingdom of I, I'm the kingdom of France. I'm I, I'm my work here is done. I'm going to go have a family now. Bye. And then they go off and you know. So unless you go, well, I still want to have your abuse. And and when you, some players go, but my character's tired. I don't, and then you make new characters, and then you just go pick, pick up the next generation. You know, it's like, so the old guys got tired. Make new characters, go, and suddenly you have new, fresh faces running around, and you're still, but now you're in the shadow of the old players. And every once in a while, you go, oh hey, these players are like burning down a village. What do you do? That's my fucking village, <laughs> and and so suddenly the old players become the Bad guys, bad guys, and now you gotta deal with those guys, or or simply, or or the players go running in and going, "Hey, rich old player, do you give me all your shit?" And the old guy, "Fuck no, that's my shit. You can't have that." But I'm the I'm the new hero. I have the new plot armor, and then the old hero goes, mm, "No, that's not how this works." Well, can you help me? No, that's not how this works, and. <laughs> And you're right. The game does not end until my plan falls into place. That is, that's true. But sometimes, you know, and and when you have players who realize that's how the game works, they can they game the system themselves because they realize, well, the GM will keep throwing plots at us, but if we, but he gives us five six year interludes between each major arc. Okay, and suddenly, like, it becomes this whole new thing. So I don't really go in with this idea of this game ends at 20th level when you go fight the fairy queen of I uh, queen of oblivion or the grand dragon of time. No, not every game has to end with the ep the epic fight between you know you and an existential crisis that's going to destroy the universe. Wait, 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 what? What? I what? What? What's going on? What was what? that? What? 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 No, no. Go ahead. Uh, which thing did I say that caught your attention? Uh, 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 you might have a peaceful resolution to the campaign. Yeah, <laughs> numerous. 
there are many times when players go, yeah, you know what? I have I have built the kingdom of, uh, you know, it's it's my empire. Fuck everyone else. Well, are you going to go on a, on a brutal campaign of conquest? No, I'm going to stop my external expansion and then focus on internal infrastructure and development and restore and lower my taxes once I've done. But 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 I'm a benevolent leader. And for the next 30 years as I'm in charge, I'm going to be a benevolent leader until you're assassinated. Well, when I die, that's not, that, that's not my problem. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> and the party is your ruling council, right? Yes. Our, who's going to let this plan work? Oh, no, we're totally on board with the idea of actually having a non-corrupt functioning government. Okay. Uh, okay. And suddenly it's like, okay, guys, we're jumping 30 years. What happened? Well, the previous generations died and retired. And now the young upstarts are now in charge of this massive economy that's running around. But they're going, man, we've been peaceful and we haven't tried to read into the, comp the continent, not Germany, in 30 years. We should read into the continent, not Germany again. And suddenly it's like, uh, do you. And then suddenly the story creates itself at that point. It's kind of actually fun. <laughs> I'm going to build infrastructure and restore the, and restore the empire. Wait, what? You you can't do that. <laughs> you can't be thoughtful and intelligent. That's that's forbidden. And the wizard, um, I'm building a tower in between reality. Bye, everybody. Wee. <laughs> hey, where'd the wizard go? No one knows. Does anybody Is, care? No. No. <laughs> no. The wizard and sorcerer decided to go off and go build. I, I, I go build their own setting with you know hookers and blackjack, and they don't care about <laughs> anyone else. I, and they're I, gone. I, I'm oh, yeah. I'll give you own hookers. Fuck the blackjack. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but what was that? I was just saying I would join that society. Yeah. And the thing is, is that it's like. And suddenly you're like, well, it's been fifty, and like it's been fifty years. It's been the reign of the last three good emperors. I think it's time for some, for someone bad to show up. And mm -hmm. externally, no. Internally, have any of you guys studied Rome? Uh, no. Read a book. Here you go, kids. Here's a history man. Uh, here's a history manual. Yeah, for every was Marcus Aurelius so was a then, Marcus Aurelius. You have a Nero. And oh, then no. I'm, <laughs> no. and Here's then I go, Caligula. <laughs> it's like when you could pull out the great courses, history, uh, history of ancient Rome on, uh, on cassette. And you're like, look here, just read this. I, I just listen to it. Wait, I got to listen to it. It's about 12 hours long and you'll learn a lot. If you want re additional reading material, you just go to the bookshelf and start pulling off manuals and books and, and tomes. And like, what's all this? And like, Guidebooks on how not to run an empire. Yeah, and, like, true too. Th and, this is the other thing too: is that usually real life will dictate the end of campaign more than anything. Job, school, family, and so on. The plague so that also does that. That also does factor into this too. That's <laughs> yes, something we haven't mentioned. Yeah, and and sometimes like sometimes you can have an entire campaign where because of you know a major you know the holidays happened and suddenly you're you're off for two for two months and you come back and go does anyone remember where we left off i have actually yeah. that one person that opens the book going the last thing we did was this and the really bad part is if the guy who has the notebook is off is gone that week because he's decided that you know he has the flu and can't make it and so everyone it's goes just the cold Oh no 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 no! He actually had legit flu that 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 day. This was back in like 2016, so it was an actual flu. It it it, it wasn't the COVID cough. So no, I was in a campaign. It's like November was about. I think uh, Halloween just happened, and we played for like the first week of November. And the DM's like, "Yeah, with the holidays and everything, we're not playing until the beginning of the next year." I'm like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? There are days in the week that don't involve a holiday." Where Family. Fa when you start having kids, it family ha I, family ruins all plans. I have a family. It hasn't stopped my gaming experience. <laughs> and and you you are right. Medieval fantasy tends to make people instantly towards literally everything being terrible, grim, dark. You're right. But sometimes you have that one player who you have those one or two players who go, man, I really enjoy playing Crusader Kings and not having my empire fall apart. That's cool. And then I'm like, oh, I got plans for you now. And 
but that, that's called having a fun players. But you know, there are some times where, where the the player whose entire goal was I'm going to become a master blacksmith and forge, you know, Excalibur's wimpy. I want a bigger, better, more awesome Excalibur. And I'm like, that's gonna be your life's work. That's your magnum. That's your magnum opus. He goes, yep. And then he disappears for like the next twenty years because he's making the ultimate sword. And then like two campaigns later, someone goes like. Whatever happened to that guy? He's still on his mountaintop forging the ultimate sword because crafting rules in D&D suck. <laughs> and, and he comes down with, with cloud sword over his shoulder. <laughs> Behold, this massive sword. It, it, just, it just controls the elements. And how long did that take you? I am too old to wield this blade. I, I, I must find a hero worthy enough to carry this monstrosity. And uh, the party, is that us? No, it's not you. But, but we're the players. No. No, you are not. No, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll make uh, that. Yeah, I'll put, I'll make one of my my characters that likes to throw things. I'll take that sword. Dun da da. Why is he throwing it around? Look, the le- <laughs> I had a player do that. Literally, was given the most coolest. Like a major character died. Cool, awesome sword falls on the ground, and the player literally picks it up. R- Runs over to a cliff and then yeets it down the cliff face right into a zombie. And I'm like, and then the zombie goes tumbling down off a cliff and into the abyss. And the, and the rest of the party's like, did you just throw? And he's like, yes, yes, I did. And and it was like, it was just a sword, right? No, no, that wasn't just a sword. But the, the whole party, we're gonna go kill you. We're gonna we're, we're gonna t- like, how deep's that abyss? You don't see the bottom. We're going down. We're going to go get that sword back. <laughs> why? And that player, why are you all angry at me? That's why you put, from years of experience of playing that type of character, that's why you put rope on everything. You just drag it back. He didn't have don't time. He just he just picked it up and then you threw it. Everything to your belt. Everything. No, no, no. What, he, what you do is one of the players walks up to him and goes, this is Sparta. Kicks him in and you get the sword. <laughs> Pull him up, yeah, yeah. And I, it was one, it was one of the most, it was one of those iconic moments. I just look at it and go, some players don't think they just hear it's a sword. I throw it. At, I, my character throws shit. I throw it, and we all just kind of went, oh god, please. So yes, players do just destroy amazing things just because they don't think to. I am more than two seconds ahead of what, where they're well, at. The character would, I mean, the character I was playing was a straight fighter. A straight fight. No, he wasn't a straight fighter, but whatever. He was fighter something. And he had the feet, you know, throw anything from Pathfinder. And he would be walking around weight wise. He could do it because of weight, how weight worked in Pathfinder. I always kind of disagreed with. He was like, I have two great swords, a battle axe, and a handful of daggers. What are you going to do with that? I'm going to throw everything, then go get it and do it all over again. Yep. It works. That's, that's that's when he goes and starts getting everything enchanted with returning on it. So yeah, you know, I know. Exactly. It wasn't until the second time of making this character it's like, you know, in an episode of a Supernatural, it's like I really need to tie ropes to these things and attach the rope to my belt so I can just drag it back. You know, someday you're gonna encounter that one that one monster just grabs you by the ropes and then beats you to death. <laughs> you know, against a wall by the ropes you tied yourself to. <laughs> No, well, no, that's already happened. It was what was it, Bruce? It was a tree monster. Which one? I was the playing one of my throwers, and I was fighting a tree monster, and it had me over its goal, and I dumped uh, Alchemist Fire down its goal. Yes. And I'm like, I think I said well, that's one angry vagina or some smart ass remark. <laughs> that's a one, the spicy burrito. <laughs> uh huh. I think it's a kingmaker. I don't care what anybody says. That just sounds hot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, players do do dumb things. The players, the, uh, the characters will do things, and the players at the end of the night are looking at their character sheet, looking at everybody else because they're staring at them. It's like, you know you're an idiot, right? But I'm just playing the character i'm not you know i'm not like this in real life it's like no hmm. no i've known you for 20 years you've been like this this day what what the hell is that with you you have not learned much have you no 
No, I stopped learning when I graduated high school. God damn it. <laughs> I stopped learning when I heard the first Le- 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 Leroy Jenkins. That's when I got off the bus. Ooh. Wait, games can be played like this? <laughs> Man, v- back in vanilla. Shit. Okay. <laughs> That's a while ago. You know, no. I, I was just reminded of uh, when you get the, the portal gun in Portal, this weapon is worth more than all the assets of subject hometown name combined. <laughs> yeah, but you just get cancer from it because of the moon radiation. Yes. But it's better than going into the box. But that's what my character would do. That's right. That's right. Going back to the dungeon. Going back to the dungeons. Going back to the dungeon. Traps, monsters. Do you have a? Okay. Are you more likely to run? And when you're running your campaign, I'm going to put X amount of these creatures or X amount of these amount of different creatures and these kind of traps too. I'm just going to pick up the monster manual, the mo- the bestiary, whatever creature book you have and say flip it page 31 goblin dogs your guys are fighting a herd of goblin dogs why the hell is a herd of goblin dogs in a dungeon why not i'm the dm don't ask questions this is what's here right gm has spoken the important thing when it comes to traps is you need to ask ask yourself is the ecology like Who lives there and do they travel around? Because nobody traps the way between the bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen. Apparently, you've never been to my apartment because there's all kinds of traps between the bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen. Look, the the one thought somebody had that it came up as a weird comment way back, like a long time ago, I was like, why is the lich's like, like, the lich's like workshop, like, there's like like a string of traps that would just, like, so he's so this guy spends like man I I need to go to my storeroom and so he gets up undoes like four traps to get through his hallway undoes a door trap undoes another trap so he can get into his pantry pull out some magical items reactivate all of his traps the whole way back and then reset like he's got seven traps between his room and his storeroom no, no. So you and don't, that's what, you don't don't what you don't know is he's got a button underneath the table. He just pushes. Right. That deactivates it all. He goes and gets the stuff and pushes it again. No, no, no. No, no you guys are overthinking it. He has a um, flying he's carpet. Not... He just flies over the trap, laying flat on his back but, on the carpet. But the thing here is, is that, but so you're like, you're, you're dealing with like, a, like, you know, some orc hordes war I, stronghold. It's like, do you put four, you know, a bunch of traps between, you know, the main barracks and the eating hall? No, because you got like 80 people traveling, you know, 300 a day into that into that area. That that hallway wouldn't be trapped because some idiot is going to walk one day, even if they all know it. Some guy who's in like, I'm just dead tired. I just want some fucking chow. And then he's going to walk in there and suddenly 45 boulders and a razor blade I saw comes flying out of the walls, smashes that poor guy and go, well, we're down to 38, guys. Let's go order another uh, uh, another orc minion to be delivered. Yeah. Ah. God, damn it. God damn it, Joe. The, the bathroom <laughs> is a trap. <laughs> Oh no no no! It, it's not. It, it's not. It, it's not that the, the the toilet is the mimic. That's how it's you feel. SR of like seventy. Yeah, but the, and so it, like, so you put the traps where like where it would make sense to be, but just throwing it like a random like no, it's like a heavily traveled area. Please don't trap that. See, see, I, the best trap I've seen is that there was a. Let's say about like a thirty foot long, five foot, you know, thing out, and there was a chest out there, and then there was a ledge over on the other side. So all the party members are like, "Okay, we're going to stand over here on the ledge, rogue, go do your thing," because then they're saying, hey, "Well, if he dies, we ain't going to be there." He sits there, he fails the tra- the, the 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 uh, the trap. 
all of a sudden the row go of uh that he came on drops the pathway drops then the wall just starts pushing all of the other heroes <laughs> into the pit of spikes and the and the rogues fine hey joe take care of yourself buddy take all care right, buddy And gnomes come out. Yeah, but uh, I guess that's uh, that's just my attitude with trapping. It's like, I, yeah. No, with, with trapping, what you do is you have the big bad guy saying, I feel like I have to go to the bathroom. And then Bye. you see Vern Troyer's skeleton get up, and he wanders over, and he disarms like three quarters of the traps, and he gets hit by a couple others because he's a skeleton. He's got 5 DR unless it's bludgeoning, so he's okay. <laughs> and then the boss goes to the bathroom. And then nope, that, whenever he has to go somewhere, he just declares where he's got to go, and Vern Troyer's skeleton wanders around and just, and <laughs> traps everything. <laughs> and that's that's yeah, how you know my games, if, if there's like a heavily trapped area. If you find a skeleton of Vern Troyer beaten by traps... <laughs> you know, see what you do is you get a, get a bag of many things and you just start throwing rabbits and squirrels and the the, the bag of many animals, yeah, a bag of yeah. tricks, a bag of something like that, yeah, yeah a bag of many things. I think I think like uh, what is it, like copper or something like that. That was a one of many things. I don't know. There's, no, a, there's, a, bag. there's, a, there's a bag where you throw out like little animals, yeah, like yeah. squirrels, hedgehogs. You and just throw those out down the hall, and, and, and they, and yeah, they do what they say, and then they just disappear. All right. Yeah, I, for the bullshit. Uh, go pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you grab a hedgehog. I choose you. <laughs> Careful, Jason. Random bullshit. bullshit. Random bullshit. Go. <laughs> no. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> That's a gnome. Uh, <laughs> half and half. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. I don't know. This is, well, I'm doing modules. So most of the monsters I'm running has already been programmed by the module. So I'm not really arguing with it too much unless yeah. it's like that makes, you know, they could just walk right through that. I need to throw something in there that has a little extra meat. Oh yeah, because like you know, every once in a while you play them where they would make sense or where it would be interesting or when the party goes, we've been looking for a while. And then they start getting a little too suspicious because it's been too nice for too long, and there's that part that goes, "No, we're we're about to get hit by something." And then you're like, "Well, do I play into their fears or not? Or have they been too un too lax for too long, and that they're just." Man, this has been too good. Let's just relax. And that's when you hit them. It's like, so it, it really is this. Like, if all you do is just constantly hit them left and right, every, you know, every five feet, another, you know, every room, another trap, another trap, eventually they're going to get like so tired to the point where all they're going to do is, is, hey, rogues, go out there and play mine, I minesweeper. And they're going out there with every five feet, putting a flag down, making sure everything's, <laughs> everything's clear. And then, you know, then they back away. You know, like, I think it's clear, 10-foot pulling it to make sure what's going on, and it's okay, and they're, like, throwing rocks, and, like, like, man, this was an adventure, but now it's just a, a gratuitous, slow dying drag, where they're just taking 10 minutes, like, every 10 feet, just because they don't want to, they don't want to die, because, you know, you're death trap dungeoning this place to the point where Grimtooth's going, that's a good idea, that's a good idea. Put it down, that's good, that's good. That's good. Oh, the entire room is actually like a three axis, um, a three axis gyroscope over a pit of whirling blades. That's perfect. And the yeah, party goes, checking, yeah, let's. They're, they're checking the floor, but what they missed is the ceiling and the walls. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and you're like, I see, I see floor, I see walls, I see ceilings. Nope, one ceiling. I think it's. It's funny because I've been actually I've done this myself, but I, I it's like um we need to take a short rest, especially on five E. We need to take a short rest or something because I'm out of it. I need hit points. 
because we've been doing this dungeon for the last three weeks, and I'm just I'm beat up. Then the DM's like, sure. Then all the monsters just hit the refresh button and restock. Yeah, no, that's what gnomes are for. You put the yeah, you, know, you put the little spiked helmet like from World War One on on their head, strap <laughs> it on. You, you get you get the barbarian to like, you know, like a dart, long dart. <laughs> and if he lands, for- he's fine. Halflings are for poisoning dragons. Gnomes are for finding traps. <laughs> See, I thought they were breeding traps for dragons because they can't never run. Um, mm. well, depends, can on what, dragon? Do, do, depends on how horny the dragon is. So what no. shape it takes? Holy crap. Mm. And, yeah, you do also have to worry about the, the price tag of traps. So when you realize that, like, wow, you... You spent like five hundred gold, a thousand gold on just trapping this dungeon. Yeah. Well, that would be where you have like uh... a, a wizard, <laughs> a wizard's in a dungeon, and he's like, "I need to build my traps. Get me a teleport." And he opens up a teleport, and it goes to like <laughs> a Lowe's or a Home Depot, and he just throws like a black cloth over like a pallet of drywall or or a drywall mud or or plywood. He just, he just tarps the shit out of it, and it's a portable hole. Wait, zoink! And now that place is out like, you know, $50,000 because they lost a bundle of three-quarter inch BC plywood. That would totally explain our our reality right now. Yeah. Though, <laughs> though, I would love to think of it, some evil wizard teleporting at, you know, in from a Home Depot and looking at the, you know, the the day workers out front and going, I need you to help me build a dungeon. Okay, get the truck. <laughs> and well, just pile on. I actually I actually read a book series. It was called NPCs. And basically the NPCs wound up becoming, you know, heroes. Basically. Kind of like free guy. Yeah, a little bit. But mm-hmm. they the the gnome paladin Actually, his the god that he worships is the uh, gnome, uh, or the uh, is a cobalt, and he is also the uh, god of the min- of minions. And basically, minions set and build all these things for wizards and war and you know warlocks and everything else that are in these dungeons. But there's also, and this is one thing that I really like with it is that. There's also secret tunnels underneath them for them to pass through fine. That's how they can get from one part of the dungeon to the other without setting off traps. It's big enough for like, you know, kobolds and, and you know, gnomes and stuff like that. Which I always thought that was really a really cool take on. Just for the simple fact of because if you think about it, they're gonna have minions who are gonna build these traps for them. So they're gonna That's need true. a way in and out. And everything else. So, I mean, that that that's one thing that 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 I really enjoyed about that because it it actually made me rethink. Well, how are these dungeons with the traps and everything else like that actually put together? Hmm. Now, now, Shadzar, I don't think like remember you are getting the quality that I what you pay for back. So if you want to hire a bunch of retarded kindergartners to dig all of your pits and put pointy shark sticks at the bottom of those pits, you're not getting, you know, a top grade trap filled dungeon. You're literally paying, like I said, retarded kindergartners to build your, I I, I, to build your traps. But those retarded kin, I can't do it. (laughs) Retarded kin uh, kin haters need work too. It's helping the economy. Look, Did you say Canadians? <laughs> Obviously, I can't um, say this great face. But the thing here is, is that if all you're really wanting are pit traps, but do you really want to tr- trust in Goblin Engineering to go build your whirling blade trap, your, you know, the very heavy weights suspended by ropes and on pressure plates? Do you really trust Goblin Engineering about that one? No, because you're like. All right, what I need you to do is here's my complex Rube Goldberg machine that will kill the party. <laughs> okay, 
no, obviously, no, no, that's not what I want. No, no, fuck it. I'm buying my skins over at the Home Depot. This is what I'm just... <laughs> No, you need kobolds. Kobolds are the master trap builders. Every scrap book or anything that has a how to make a perfect dungeon has like experts yeah. uh, uh, talking about kobolds. Okay. That's because most people who are first starting and dealing with kobolds are like, Wow, this is my first game. Kobolds. We're all about being devious little shits who build uh, who build first level traps that are all that are meant to kill first and third level party members. Yeah. There's a certain point though when the party gets to the where the rogue is like, um, no, I'm actually better than this. And it's like so unless you start giving levels to the kobolds, which is cool. That's yeah. always cool. And go have some fun. Start being de- I am devious and think to yourself. Yeah, kobolds are en- are engineering this. This is pretty good. And all of a sudden, um, pun pun comes out running. Yeah, but <laughs> and also and it, and the goblins really are depending on which universe's version of goblins you're using. If you're using, you know, I mean, Watsy's version of dun- of goblins, they're all like I said, retarded kindergartners. And if you are using, you know, Paizo's, um. Goblins, they're retarded. I, I, they're retarded I, kindergartners who are sadistic and slightly more intelligent, but with more, but with more teeth. And but e- either way, you're dealing with you know the bottom. Unless you're going to make them interesting and, and intelligent, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel out here for those. Well, and well, here's the thing. Uh, hold on, I need to address that one. The 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 that Darth just put in. So here's the issue, though. If a goblin can read, he's killed. You're right. He's taking the knowledge from the book. Ooh. In the book. But not the book. And it's like, and I know that part of this just comes as my just general, you know, that realization that most of I've had players who go, wait, who financed this dungeon? Well, it was built recently or old. Um, and they start like backtracking and finding out, you know, materials that were bought. Cause like, you know, they'll go in and find out like, well, this was constructed within the last, when you had that one dwarf who goes, this was built in the last 30, 30 or so years, which means the engineer is still probably around. And then they all of a sudden leave, do research, build a base camp, come back and then go, no, we've tracked down like, you know, who made his saw blades, who made his traps, where his reagents have been coming from. And, like, and I'm like, wait, you guys have done like an entire corporate investigation. You guys want to do this to go find us? Yeah, we want to f- we want to know what we're getting into. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Go go for it. Um, backtrack everything. Um, My question is, how is that guy who designed the dungeon or whatever still alive? Because he was always the last person to get killed after the thing was built. Uh, the thing is, is that there's always a, even if he was killed designing it, so you can't find out the actual layout, but you still, but, but you can still track down friends, associates, families, contractors that he had worked with, people he had procured through, and they backtrack this all out to the point where I'm like going, okay, and because because they realize that I'm an that I'm an anno player, so therefore I'm like, no, no, there's there's an entire like you know supply chain and supporting this entire monstrosity that would that all needs to be backtracked full through and then we can figure out where the money came from and so and when they get to the point where like can we just cut off the dungeon's um money supply so that way they just can't continue to maintain their equipment um they might have some they might be able to keep running like no no we're going to economic warfare now and then they go wandering off and i'm like and so, so suddenly, when you could draw the main villain of the dungeon out, because you know his his banks and investors go, um, yeah, someone's going after our assets, so you need to come out here and take care of problems. And but that's just more creative. Um, you know, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I got to find my ass at your table one of these years because <laughs> <laughs> that's more in depth than the shit I get. That's literally what okay. That's literally what, what they did. They, I, I had a horrible I, I had a horrible encounter, and the party went okay. So we're gonna backtrack. Okay, so they found out the alchemist who made I, I, who made the the poisons, backtracked the suppliers for that. They found his um his his in, uh, I, his main blacksmith who was doing all his all of his heavy I, heavy iron forging. Tracked down his investors. Tracked down the people who were backing it. Found the entire conspiracy out. Never fought the actual villain. 
but they took out his entire support base through like just showing up there and going, we'll buy you out or we'll take over your operation. Like we know you're working for an evil eye uh, for an evil organization. Would you like to like work for somebody who's actually paying properly and will actually like pr provide benefits like dental and, and healthcare. And so I was like, can you also like pay for my house? We'll pay for your first six months of rent. Done. Done. Now I know it's fantasy. You're offering dental. Um... Right. Look, again, my players are the good. It is fantasy. They're being the good bosses that we would all like to be. That's the whole point of playing fantasy is to be what doesn't actually exist. <laughs> what was that, Bruce? No, I was just, I was, I was just laughing over here. <laughs> But and it's and it's funny when they actually drew the main villain out, they got him to come out, getting ready to fight him, and the and the villain's like, um, "This is my portfolio and my and my resume. Would, I, would you like to hire me?" But we were, but he's like, "Look, you you've already stopped my super weapon. You've already stopped my invasion plans. I have no support, but I am a high, I am a high ranking uh, management. I, I I have management experience." Can I just hire on as a um, support uh, and, you know, uh, a high level exec in your organization? See, and I got William Defoe and what was that movie? <laughs> Boondock Saints <laughs> in my head. When he's in that hotel room, he, this doesn't happen in real life. You get, you know, where you get this from, from bad movies. That's what no, no professionals do it this way. <laughs> yeah. But the, I, and the thing was, was it's like, so I like said this. I mean, when you have players who are just like, no, no, let's let's be logical about this, and then suddenly they, like the the huge dungeon you planned goes goes right out the window because there's they just choose not to go. <laughs> and, Bruce, he he brings up this concept I've never heard before: logical players. I know, I know. Pay no, I pay no mind. I get Maybe no mind. I am. I am. Part, the, I get murder hobos. And he's got logical fucking players. Look, in any in any group, you have an outlier, and you always throw the outlier out because it because it ruins the rest of the study. I am the outlier. Throw out my examples. They are not the norm. I mean, I, I've I've definitely had a few DMs that are really burnt because all his games have turned into murder hobo uh, campaigns, but. <laughs> That's the players, not the DM. <laughs> right. Right. And most of the games I'm in, I'm are almost that I get to play in our murder hobo fest. But you just kind of go, eh, that's what we do. And but that's why I try to be different because I want to actually go, this is the game I want. Please someone else run this game. No, 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 no. So you know, you have fun. You do what you can. So, so yeah, the, uh, the 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 big hot topic after you saying that, is yeah, Christmas tree. I thought it was goblins with brace, a uh, uh, dental plan. Uh, oh, goblins with braces? That tree, that tree, is a temporary stand-in because I needed to have something for the for the holidays, and it, you know what? It's my Charlie Brown tree. It's it, it's the the real one looks nice, but it's big. This apartment is tiny. So you I know, have Garrett, that thing. Garrett, we ought to we ought to turn that tree into a VTuber <laughs> and just have it dub over Blaine. We can do this. Yeah. We can do this. Okay, okay. What you do is you put a mouth on it with a little piece of string. <laughs> and when you talk, you just pull the string down a little bit. We'll put, put a couple of googly eyes on it. We're set. God. So no, I mean, it every once in a while when you when you're like Arr! you shake it just a little bit just for the Rawr. watch all the needles come off and it gets naked. It's all nope. nope, that's going back into a box and it's just gonna get stored in the closet and then come out again next year. So oh, what is it always out of the closet with you people? <laughs> Storage. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> What's wrong with dungeon crawls and hex crawls? Absolutely nothing. nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. It's it just that your pl already. your players do with whatever you throw at them. If your players, uh, I want to run with it. 
let them run with it. If they want to go off in a direction you've never even going to expect, let them run off in that direction. All you can do is put the bait out. They have to bite. No, with uh, the uh, hex crawl, hex crawl. I have to say, I enjoy hex crawl as a player. I don't know if I could put up with it as a DM, but uh, it, it does offer a lot of different opportunities to find the treasure, to get killed, to become the hero of the day, and so forth and so on. I, I do appreciate that. Shedler's so. like, Fat Steven knows the guy that can make a tree for Blaine. Fat um, Steven Seagal's like, why are you throwing the dice at players? You could you, you could lose an eye. Yeah. <laughs> you shoot your eye out. You lose a die. Die, eye. Uh, it doesn't work. Now, um, why do you use another thought of it? What about location? Is there anywhere, like most of us are from Peoria, is there anywhere that you've actually, for the ambulance or just being able to say, I ran here, is there anywhere in Peoria that any of you guys actually wanted to run or to sit at and game at? No. No? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say that out of, out of the Peoria places, I would say that the one place I would have liked to have ran at I would have had to buy the bar for the day and ran there, and that would be the Brass Rail because I've seen a lot of music there. But I think the uh, pub across the street from the game room would have been a lot better. Oh, the one down uh, one, the the one down the stairs? No, not that mm. one. That one that one there is too much too rich for my blood. That's called the C Note Pub. No, mm. not going there. Someone um, right across the street. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I I had a few beers there. We had a few shots there. Yeah, was it shots? <laughs> I've drank and slept since then. Um, it's only been a decade. Been the thing here decade. is, is that I mean, after a while, if you're I mean, when you're used to like running out of a you know out of the back of a Denny's every once in a while because that's the only place that's, oh, that's oh, that you know you oh, get food. And, you can get food at GM at, I, I, or you just, or if you just end up at, you know, um, fuck, you know, Kelleher's down the riverfront late night, and it's like we're just going off. To, I, I, we're just gonna go off to the back. We're, I, we'll come up for beer periodically, and you and you just, you know, hang out, bullshit about the game, and roll some dice in the background. Well, you've gamed at Kelleher's. Congratulations. I, and oh. when you go. At, Go for it. Actually, when you go actually, uh, Sullivan's is actually they have a bunch of uh, games up there. Ta- or uh, board games that you can. Actually yeah, I've been up there with you once. That was a really cool experience. Sullivan's is nice, but and the thing here is, is that honestly, when you're out gaming with friends, I, if you're out tra- I, hanging out with your gaming group or at least several members of it, everywhere you go is gaming. I. I uh, it really is. <laughs> That's fair. I was lucky enough to know not the uh, current owner, but the previous owners of the. Uh, if you go on the Grandview Drive, the castle at the end of the lane. Yeah. Uh, the Hossies. That was the uh, former owners. I was lucky enough to know them. I know. I, I. They both have passed away, but I've known them most of my life. And I always joked with the uh, owner, uh, Dave, who's like, I would love to run a campaign out of your house because it looked like a freaking dungeon. I mean, not dungeon, Jesus, a castle. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I've even, like, you know, was bored. They had I, I, they had an ice cream cruise at the um, on the Spirit of Peoria. Just literally told everyone, fuck it, guys. Meet me all down here. We're I we're gonna pay you know pay ten bucks and we're just gonna sit there and cruise and bitch about gaming on on the on the paddle wheeler and just traveled up and down the river I and just bullshitting like honestly like with when you have friends and which should be what your group is you really shouldn't hate them that you don't want to invite them to, to do fun stuff it's going to I naturally devolve into talking about bitching about gaming and you're going to end up talking about shit and i guarantee you i have you're going to you, know, you ask gamers hey is, are, do any of you have dice and somebody somebody is going to pull out of their pocket one of those bags of micro dice or some other shit like why do you have dice on you oh, and if you don't have dice someone's going to pull out their phone download a dice roller app and like we got dice 
and my, suddenly my you're now playing. Keeps, my wife keeps at least one, if not two, full sets of dice in her purse. And I've got dice in my travel, you know, in my travel bag. So uh, yeah, these dice go with me almost anywhere I have my backpack, just in case, because you never know when, when a game is going to break out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carmen would bring dice everywhere. She still does. Okay, nothing's changed. No, I mean, as I said, joking around, uh, it's like a bunch of us. This Jesus was, you know, twenty years ago. And a bunch of us were hanging out at Perkins, and it's like, hey, you want to grab some food and roll some dice? Sure, let's run. <laughs> and the waitress is like, don't worry, we'll give you a big tip at the end. You know? And, and the thing here is, is that and at, with certain late-night bars or, or restaurants, you know, because they're getting they're diminishing now as time goes on, you know, the, the all-nighters. But, yeah, yeah. At, like, if you're sitting there and you got people bitching about, you know, bitching, you know, gaming – Throwing some dice around, you're going to get somebody else at a different table is going to poke their head around and go, "Hey, you guys, talk about uh, what are you guys talking about?" And then suddenly you find out, "Oh wait, wait, there's another gaming group here." Okay, and then you start just making uh, making new connections. You literally just like dice are just magical thing. Once you hear them roll across it, your ears perk up. You're like, "Oh, fuck, okay." And I know that sound. <laughs> I know that sound. The then, magic and, 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 rocks. And as soon, as soon as you hear math rocks, your brain goes. Shh, shh, guys, shut up. Listen to what they're talking about. And then you sit there and go, and then you get like, and then you poke your head and go, hey, you, you make friends and you go, hey, um, do you got like an extra, you know, an, an open slot at your table, you know, in your game? Oh, yeah. And then you suddenly, I guess, guess what? You found a new gaming group. Yay. I, I, I love the game. accomplishment. As much as I mean, I, ideally, as much as I like, I like gaming with new people, people I don't know. I like getting that small set group that, you know, we meet every Friday or whatever. But every once in a while, I like to know at least one other person in that group where I don't know those people. So all the old jokes that we've all, you know, all the uh, fart and joke, uh, fart and dick jokes that we tell each other, you hear new ones. Right. And the fun part there is that who knows? You might like, cause like I've stumbled across walking into, you know, LARPer groups or, or, you know, you walk in and like they're, they're bullshitting. And all of a sudden you realize, Oh shit. You've just walked into a, um, to an SCI, to an SCA house meeting in the middle of the night where they're all just drinking, you know, cause, they, cause they're all drunk, but they want food. And now you've, and now you find yourself sitting out in the middle of a cold, uh, of a cold field getting beaten on by wooden weapons because <laughs> they thought it'd be fun to, uh, to introduce you to the, uh, to the rest of the clan. And you're like, what, what, what's, what's going on here? Oh, we're just showing you what, uh, what we do for fun. It involved beating me with sticks. Yes. <laughs> That's kind of how I got it. I mean, college, I was looking for a side job. There was an ad to work at a Renaissance fair down Ooh. Champagne. I'm like, why not? It's a Renaissance fair. Oh. <laughs> okay. That yeah. is not where I thought you were going with that. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I thought the term 20 bucks is 20 bucks was going to come out of your mouth. Right? 20 bucks is 20 bucks. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. But that's besides the <laughs> point. I'm working at the Renaissance Fair. Next thing I know, the guy in the booth down from me is like talking about 3.5 and how he oh. likes to play that barbarian. Who, and now you got friends. Two, he knows two words chocolate and booze. That's the only two common words he knows. Then somehow he's part of. A daggy here group, and I'm out in the middle of foam in the middle of summer getting beat on by yep. foam weapons. <laughs> Ten years later, we're all still friends. Those bastards. Yep. No, 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 no. There needs to be a couple more zeros. A couple more zeros. <laughs> That's a lot of talk zeros. About the group is for twenty bucks. So. Uh... <laughs> So a lot of zeros. Uh, there's just one point in there. Oh. <laughs> so with with table breakers, we're almost at the two hour mark, and yeah, yeah uh, we, we we've hit a bunch of different topics. Main thing we hit tonight was like the Peoria gaming scene is a lot different than other places. Yeah, we're we're, we're messed up. Yeah, we are. No. And, and <laughs> other cities occasionally will have this pop up where they'll have gaming groups go to like Denny's or they'll be playing in a bar. They'll actually take their books to the bar or be having the characters on books on phone. 
but you don't have that everywhere. And it's weird because that culture up in Peoria spoiled me really, really well. You can't you know do what that say. down here. You know what they say, if it plays in Peoria. If it plays in yeah, that's that. We are a weird community. Well, most of us are, I mean, not, I'm definitely not an engineer, but most of the people that come to Peoria more is because of that one place that starts with a C, ends up with fuck that and you, and I'm out. That's how we all work. <laughs> I've got to try this. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Uh, the, a lot Look, of times, like it, like it, Perkins, the the actual game of choice was like magic. Magic was the easiest thing to just put away when the food came or whatever. I mean, I need, I need a Waffle House in Peoria. God damn it! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love but Waffle you House. Have Perkins and Denny's, and those are almost as good. No, no. Waffle House. Waffle House is a, like Waffle House, is like right up there with Shoney's. Like you, like you walk in there yeah. knowing that, like. I got like five in the morning. You know that guy who just who's just sitting there looking at you like, please don't come in here. Like I'm I, look, I don't give a shit. Be, serve me at whatever rate you want. I'm here at at Waffle House at four in the morning. Fuck it, I ain't trying to go anywhere. If so, I had the money, I know it's a franchise. If I had the money, I'd definitely open up one here because I know it'd make money. See, you'd have I to think put it on, make money. You, you'd have to put it on fifty five or fifty seven. For it to really make the coin it deserves. No, 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 no. Seventy-four. No, 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 no. University, what? right? University, right next to Bradley. All those college, uh, college kids. I don't know. Waffle uh, houses are like, like need to be like you. Need that horrible yellow block sign that that hangs I, there over the road, so that way truckers and people who are traveling can just go fuck it i'm hungry and there pull is, off the road i understand what you're thinking and i really do understand what you're thinking but there's a waffle house right next to the main college in nashville vanderbilt and they might they make money hand over fist because of those college kids true god it's been a while since i've been at a shoney's too so i don't even know if shoney's, i was upset for about three days yep do a Waffle House, not Waffle House, uh, White Castle. We need one of those down here, too. I hate going all the way up to fucking um, Chicago for a wh well, for got, White well, Castle. Well, they've got them in Chicago and also in St. Louis. Yeah, around St. That's Louis. three hours, at, at three and hours that, both and ways. Also, no. And that's also the closest Waffle House is down, in, in, down close to St. Louis. We are fucking stuck in purgatory. This sucks. <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't say Peoria is exactly a food desert because we have a lot of different restaurants here, but it's never the restaurants you want. It's like no. I no. want Cracker Barrel. Uh, okay. Morton. You've got Cracker Barrel. Morton. Morton. Yeah. Man, there's I don't know. I've been to like uh, I've been to a Cracker Barrel down in Tennessee and it's just different somehow. I don't know yet why, but it was just different. Because they spit in. Yeah. Come on. It's oh, it's that, southern it's, that, 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 that southern hospitality goes, oh, there you go. But no, yeah, I have to say you're right, Bruce. Uh, uh, Gaming-wise, Peoria spoils you. We have a solid game shop here that you can get all your gaming need. Um, You can game there. And a lot of the, just, Peoria seems to be a gaming town. I talked to the guy who owns the game shop I'm talking about, about the new uh, T-Mod fig, the one that they're wanting $400 for. Yeah, I saw that. And he's like, I've already sold like four of them. I'm like, Peoria, you've already sold four of them? It's like, yeah, it's a bigger gaming group that you, than you think it is. I'm like, I, I guess. That's, yeah. with, that's with also because they've got the second – Second place. Well, they've got three game shops now in town. So, uh, was it uh, Cabbage and King or Cabbage or something like that? Yeah, cabbage, yeah. Cabbages, uh, just for fun, and mm -hmm. then also Zeke's. Well, Zeke's is in Washington. You know, it's, it's all part the, of the greater, I uh, in the greater yeah. area. Anywhere you get to in twenty minutes is part of the same town. 
Nash, yeah, well, unfortunately, Nashville has the same feeling. Anywhere you can drive within 45 minutes, it's the same town. I'm like, no, no, it's not. Yeah. But, uh, no. no. I'll still say yeehaw. <laughs> yeehaw. <laughs> With uh, everything working out the way it did tonight, guys, and uh, for those of you that are in chat, uh, for those of you that are watching us on the restream, I really appreciate you guys stopping here. This was, we, we hit a lot of different topics and I'm always up to, to discuss things. Next week, I think we're going to be talking about hirelings and cohorts, cohorts, cohorts and leadership and things of that nature. Because that'll be a much more focused topic, I hope. <laughs> I, I tonight was scattershot, and that was fine. The four of us getting together and talking shop and talking about the tables we used to play at together is a is always fun for me. Uh, Shauner Film says just Denny's here, and Shad's are like the only place better for Waffle Hop, better than Waffle House for late night gaming is IHOP. Yes, mm, I'm kind of burnt on IHOP, but I got my reasons. IHOP has good big has big tables. I'll say that much. They do. If if they, they do. Do, if you have a five group a five pop, you you can get a good table. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I know Connell that you don't really do a lot of streaming, but what thinking about it? I have to ask you if you were to start making your own content. Oh God, save us all! Yeah, what would you focus on? Probably D and D, Pathfinder, um, the community. The type of people, what type of people would you want at your table? Where would you want your table located at? It'd be your home, his home, local library, the society of the games. Not so much the game by the rules, but just the society, the people that play it. Okay. Blaine? Yes? What would your focus be on? Oh, God. A lot of weird ass ideas. I have a lot of highway driving time, so I think of a lot of strange things. I don't know if I have a single focus. I really wish I would, but I don't. It's all right. You know, we I came in here tonight not knowing really what we were gonna focus on as a topic, and I rewound last week's stream and we stumbled on to Half breeds and the book of exotic fantasy, <laughs> of erotic the book of erotic fantasy, the best selling third party book for 3.0, I believe. That uh, made them there. change the rules, so it will never happen again. <laughs> it's up there. Yeah, they'll they'll never make a book like that again. They probably will, but you know, <laughs> hold it, my beer. It was a fun book <laughs> to read. It um, was. I, I've got to say that. We, we we hit a lot of different topics. Next week, if it's if it's more focused, that's fine. I'm not worried about it. Calvinani says he's he likes doing indie games and OSR stuff and miniatures. And Darth Thick is like, I have a PDF of that book. I like miniature games. I like D D that can, or Pathfinder or any system that plays with miniatures. I, I it helps my imagination to see what my character's doing other than we're using mental theater. I'm like, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> You're right. You're right there. Don't use focus in me in the same sentence. Uh, Multi Gunman, welcome back, and I hope that you enjoy the uh, time we had here. Uh, Garrett, anything you want to talk about this week or that you have coming up on your, your own channel? Well, it's not it's not going to be on my primary channel. It's going to be on my gaming channel. Uh, I've already recorded it, and I've got it set to drop at 6 a.m. tomorrow uh, Central Time. Ooh, uh, noon on uh, in the uh, GMT. Uh, the reason I left Twitch, this is the first Table Breakers that I've done where I've not multi-streamed. This is just straight on to YouTube. Well, I, um, I hope this proves this, this better for you. The, the, yeah. Uh, this past week, I petitioned to have my affiliate removed. It was done within a half an hour. Not even I, I got a a uh, exit exit uh, survey Perfect. of well, how was your experience with it? Terrible. Didn't ask me why 
I gave up the affiliate. It didn't ask me any questions. So uh, that's going to be on my gaming channel. If you guys are subscribed to my normal channel, you'll find the link in the description of. Uh, Why don't you post your channel. link in our chat here? I am waiting to watch that. Or, or post it, or post it in the uh, private chat, and I'll put it in. Well, I've got, I've got to get back there. Hold on. Tick, 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 tick. Is that playing cards you have? Yes, I. I'm fidgety. My hands need something to do. I need to get a new. I need to get a new deck of Three Dragon Annie. There is my my gaming side. Thank you. And everything else. I after the first of the year, I'm really going to be starting to hit that pretty hard here, uh, with more gaming content and whatnot. Uh, so so if you if you enjoy that type of thing. Uh, definitely check me out there. I'm going to also be, you know, doing this. So I'm kind of pulling a little bit of double duty with, uh, I said, duty. uh, with, uh, with the tabletop side and also the gaming, the, the actual PC slash, uh, you know, I've got a switch and a PS4 and all that, that I can connect into and do stuff. So, uh, I'm going to be starting that probably here in the next week or two. I've just taken a little bit of time off of doing that just so I can kind of get a few things, you know, square with myself and whatnot. And, and, but uh, definitely uh, I, I doubt that it'll really do anything, but if it can open up at least one person's eyes on, on the way that Twitch actually handles certain things, then um, yeah. I'll just leave it at that. The one thing I want to do this week, um, aside from tomorrow when the episode four of the season six of The Expanse comes out, I want to watch that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, I can watch that one. I, I've I've got to say that I love The Expanse. Um, Don't watch Burn Brain, yes. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's a great show. It looks like it, it it's actually going to wrap up with an actual plot, unlike a, a, another show with many different factions and many different actors and many locations that wrapped up with a giant stinking turd after eight seasons. So, no, the expanse is good, and I, I can't wait for that. Also, there was a there was a um, character from an old company called TSR. The, the CEO of that company has made a lot of weird web appearances lately on discords, on different uh, channels, on YouTube. And he just seems like he's just, he, he gets online when he probably should be in bed. <laughs> and he was affiliated with a game called Giant Lands, and it recently was released. And I haven't watched a, an unboxing video of it yet, but a friend or an acquaintance of mine because I, I i don't know crafty that well i like crafty i really do but i have not listened to his rant on the unboxing his, his camera died in the middle of the unboxing or at the start of the unboxing and no that was max. what that was max that was max that was max i thought it was crafty no it was max crafty just posted stuff into the gatekeepers discord okay well I remember Crafty had posted stuff about it, but yeah, that's right. Max had posted that his camera failed, and I oh, haven't gone on locals yet. Yeah, he also Justin, put, he also, yeah, I think he put it in Discord too. Yep, Justin Lanasa attacked us on last week's Gatekeeper stream over the term RPG versus tabletop RPG. And you know, that's really just not a hill that I'm willing oh, to. Oh, yeah, when I hosted. Not this yeah. past week, the week before, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not willing to die on that because it's it's a nothing burger. And the guy came in and he was swinging like a schlup. And then he went over to Tin Car's Tavern stream on Christmas Day. And Tin Car had his, like, 13-year-old niece on there. Little cute kid. I mean, and he acted like a fool in the comment section, ripping open Tin Car. Hey, you only got 13 views. Look at the lame hero you are. And then he starts going after the content of it, and he just he made himself look really bad. And I was, 
Say again? Somehow I missed all of this, but yeah. well, it's 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 just it, it's part of a real small part of my periphery that I pay attention to thanks to Discord. But I don't know Tin Car that well. I, I respect the guy because he is a retired NYPD guy. And yeah. he enjoyed he en- he enjoys a lot of things about the gaming scene. He doesn't really allow politics in his Discord, so you have to respect that. It, his house, his rules. So some people have a problem with that, but as far as being a man, Tin Car seems to be really solid. He really does. And it really upset me that Lanasa goes into a comment section where eleven year old girls at, and he just starts acting like a belligerent fool. And this isn't the first time that Lanasa has done this. And there, the barbs that Tin Car was throwing back seem to have a edge. Like there's a history between them. They might know each other from just more than being on the internet. I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But Tin Car knew enough about him to where he hasn't returned back and deleted comments. But I'm very disappointed in a company that bought the TSR logo and was promising TSR like experiences, you know, like we're going to sell role playing games again. We're going to we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And every time they have something. They they make a press release about it and then that turns to shit. And this is something I, I've been wanting to talk about just for a minute, but and maybe you guys don't know about it, or maybe you don't care. Garrett, I know you've made videos on it. Yeah, I, 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 I've, I, I've kind of backed off those just because, especially after he came in to, and started doing that in, in my gatekeeper stream. Well, I mean, you know that 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 was that was not a you know a thing you know excuse the the usage, but. Uh, the word usage here, but that was not a, a cross you needed to come in and, and die on on my in my stream, and you know, and he kind of was trying to do that. So it's you know, it's it. it I, I'm backing off of those and whatnot, and just kind of uh, just for the simple fact of I I really did not appreciate that but you know it kind of it and i really it put you on a map and i guess it made you a target yeah it, it, you know yeah i i mean I, I got a few views out of it i think i got like 30 or 40 views out of each one of those i put up two of them i, I was all happy because i got like 30 views you know oh, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm a channel i i'm a channel starting out of course i'm gonna get happy at a few views on something like that but exactly. you know it is the you know it, it's it's you know, I was kind of going in for a little bit of the shock and shock and awe factor with it, and uh, and, and I kind of got it, but I didn't like the other crap that came with it, so I backed off of it. Oh, I'm uh, I'm just gonna post this, you know, and I don't like Justin Lanasa. I from from what I've learned about him, from what I saw in their own Discord, there's nothing I can I can gain by endorsing their products or by saying they're nice people uh even even members of the quote unquote the right center right the extreme right side of the political gaming spectrum distances themselves from uh from lanasa and it's like every time the guy opens his mouth he just kind of buries himself a little deeper and i i just wish he would just i i don't say this about a lot of people but he can go away and I wouldn't miss much. I wouldn't miss anything. It'd be like, oh, that boil went away. Oh, that's great. I can sit down now. But I, I don't find I don't find him to be a, a company that I want to get behind. And I, I wish I could say differently, but man, they've everything they've touched has turned to shit. It's just my thoughts. Maybe that's the wrong way to end a, a table breaker stream, but no. uh, I, I I felt it was important enough for me to talk about because this is only f- three or four days after Lanasa made an ass of himself at Ten Cars in the comment section, and a week after he made an ass of himself at Garrett's stream. <sighs> yeah, and and TSR is fulfilling orders. They refuse to refund any money from anybody that ordered anything through TSR three. They're not giving you the money back. So if you bought something from them, 
you're going to get product. You're going to get a product that you probably won't like too. So just mm -hmm. keep your money. If you if you like the TSR logo, you can go to a pawn shop and find an old D&D module or box set. And you can buy that. And you can look at it with fond memories and be like, when you were a kid, you know, things were different. You were probably happier. Or you but, can Google it. Yeah. You can Google it. You can look at that and it'd be happier. But don't order from TSR3 because... Everything they produce so far is only for PR release, it seems like. And and I hate to say that, but I'm equating Justin Lanasa to Jessica Price. The bottom tier of the gaming spectrum. Sorry, kids. And I'm not sorry, Justin. Fuck you. So, <laughs> uh, with that, this week... Uh, right, I've, got, I've got one more thing. Go ahead. Uh, gatekeepers, this... Uh, this next week is going to be on the 5th at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, it's going to be hosted by the uh, man behind the screen. So uh, I've not gotten what he's going to do yet, but he's uh, going to be doing that this coming Wednesday. So definitely make sure you do check that out. Also, uh, don't forget about the uh, Legion of Myth, the RPG Digest. I believe they're coming back on Sunday or no? Are they taking two weeks off? Bruce? Well, I'm just looking through the chat here, and it's good to see Captain Trek pop in. He's a real nice guy. He uh, He's a miniature uh, enthusiast. Like Ooh. Yeah, he, so, he's, he's big. Bruce, do you know do you know if Legion of Myths doing Digest this week or not? Or are they off again? I don't know if they're doing a Digest this week, but I do know tomorrow at 7, LOM, Legion of Myth. Our friends uh, Max and uh, others are going to be there for their chill stream. Yes. Garrett, uh, never chill. if you go to the LOM site, you can post their link in the chat so people will know it. And I'll put it up there. I'll blast it on the billboard. Um, that's where I plan to be at tomorrow night is just kind of hanging out there, painting. And, uh, yeah, that's that's the other thing. Mr. Calvinani brings up a really good yeah, they did a fundraiser to raise money to sue Wizards of the Coast. I, was, and then, I and wish then I could make that shit up. And then, that, they, and, and then they said that any money left over, they were going to erect statues at the museum to the people who... Uh, what was it? The people who... who uh, started the original TSR. So Gary, Mark Arneson... All those guys give us money so we can throw it at, at lawyers and then not have any money left. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was actually just reading an article about that and just fucking wow. That's all I can really say is fucking wow. Yep. All right. I want I want new managers so got, I can paint. <laughs> I think I think we've kind of exhausted everything. Boys, do you guys have anything else? I'm going to put Captain's Trek, uh, Captain Trek's link in the channel there, the channel chat. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys that just, you know, not really you four that are here. Maybe you guys in the chat already know this. But if somebody's telling you what to think, how to think, you probably need to distance yourself a little bit and really weigh the options that you have in life because... You're in a position to where you're being influenced too much and you need to be thinking for yourself. If you're not thinking for yourself, you're going to make bad decisions. You're going to have a lighter wallet than you want. You're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do. And I hate to tell people to be selfish, but really you need to be having this life go on with your best interests. If you're not, you really have to question yourself. Why am I in this hamster wheel? That's all I really have to conclude with. Um, New Year's Eve, tomorrow night, everybody, if you can be safe, be safe. If you are bound and determined to wreck yourself with alcohol or physical abuse, we probably can't stop you, but you should probably talk to somebody about this that's close to you, that can stop you, and give you some options like, listen, we're just going to have a few Zimas or Tequizas, maybe we're going to have some aftershock whiskey. But we're we're not we're not gonna like inflict great harm on our liver. Let's think about this. It's only 2022, not 2025, not year 2000. 
not the year 2050. Not to cause for a huge celebration. Be careful, guys. And if you do go out and, and do drink, you know, remember there are services out there that can take you home, pick you up. Just don't just be safe out there. Don't drink and drive. Be responsible. Remember, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yeah. Captain Shrek, you've got a good growing channel. And uh, I know your channel. It's it's a good place to hang out and just let time pass while I paint miniatures and let you stream or do things. So anyway, everyone, it was a pleasure being here. We will be back here 7.30 CST next week, January the 6th. We will be more than happy to entertain you with our shenanigans and our random outbursts of chat. Uh, thank you. And we will see you later. Have a great night, everybody. Good night.